Hello again, welcome to another video, I got a request of making a tutorial about architecture visualization, so today I will be remaking the scene for you guys, I choose to make this one because it's not much complicated and everyone can follow along, but before we jump into Blender, a huge thanks to all my supporters and subscribers, all of you are awesome, it's always your support that helps me make more and more tutorials, but if you are new here, then please subscribe my channel. Rogue Knight 3D, so you are always updated of my new upcoming videos, and if you love my work and want to support, then you can follow me on Patreon, all my patrons will be getting the blend file for free, or if you just want the file then you can have it on Gumroad as well. Well back to Blender. GZ1 to move it one unit upward. Scale it up a little. Control R, bring in two edge loops. Scale them up so they are pretty close to the edge. Extrude both the front and back faces. It's all the same, adding edge loops, extruding, scaling, and adjusting its shape. I won't be looking for the perfect shape in this tutorial, but you can take your time and aim for the best shape that you can get. I'll select the middle edge loop, and then scale it down to take it inward. Now control B to bevel it. Go to the modifiers tab and select subdivision modifier. Now you can see the shape is all messed up. We can fix it manually by just adding edge loops like this. Or we can use a bevel modifier but nothing is happening. Take the bevel modifier above the subdivision modifier, now you can see, it's fixed. Now bring in a mirror modifier, it's mirrored but I don't want to mirror it like this. Shift right click to bring the cursor on the top face. Object, set origin to 3D cursor. Yeah now it's much better. Now bring in an array modifier. Use the value of 1 around its x or y axis, it totally depends on your scene. Now bring in another array modifier. Now set up your camera to the best possible angle. Shift A, bring in a plane. Scale it big because it's going to be our floor. Have some extra space covered behind your camera, to avoid extra lights from the surroundings to fill up our scene. Extrude to cover the back and the side. Take these edges back, so they don't block our sun or additional lights. That we will be adding later on. P to separate the selected face. C 
separate it again, we are separating the faces which we will subdivide later, because we will not subdivide the parts of the scene that won't be visible in the render. We did this to control our poly count. Use edge loops to make a door shape. Extrude it back a bit. Add some edge loops on the floor. Separate this face, so later we can only subdivide it. Have at least 30 number of cuts. It's the same process again. After adding a subdivision modifier, you can see it's messed up, we can manually fix it by just adding additional edge loops. Now it's time for shading. Control Shift T to directly search for textures on your hard drive. A to select all the faces then press U, select Smart UV Project. You can play with the scale till you find something that you like. You can clearly see, there are some issues with the texture. We can switch bevel to angle. It may fix some problems but not the stretching that we are watching right now. To fix it, bring in an edge loop and bring it closer to the top edge, adding extra loop cuts mostly fixes many texture issues. Add some more edge loops as well. Bring in a hue saturation node, a noise texture and a color ramp. Make the texture darker a bit, by playing with the value. When we play with the sliders, you will see unique roughness on our model, that adds more realism to the scene. I will use the same material for the ceiling as well, but will remove the noise and the color ramp nodes. Again the same material for the wall. But this time I will switch projection to camera. and lower the value a little bit more. Now select the door. Add a new material and then unwrap. Bring in an image texture. Control T to bring in mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Now just fix the scale. Lower the specular and increase the roughness value.
Now set up the floor texture, the process is totally the same. Well if you want even more details, we can use the displace modifier. Find the displacement texture. Reduce its strength so it's still looking smooth, but still it will have a little bit of more detail. The same can be done for the other models. Well I like the look, now it's time to light up the scene, I won't be lighting up the scene like I did earlier for my version of the render, but it's totally on you, you can play with the lighting. But if you want to learn more about lighting you can watch this tutorial. Even with a sun lamp you can see it's not perfect, it's because we didn't set up our environment, we have to bring in an HDRI to light up our scene. If you want to rotate your HDRI, you can play with the rotation Z value for that. Well if you still think, your scene is not perfectly lit, increase the sun strength a little bit and increase the background strength as well. Now you can see, your scene is looking much better than before, but yet it needs more lights and it's your job to bring in more area lamps and try to light up your scene. When we are all done, you can now work on other models as well.
well it's now your job to work on the lighting a little bit more, think of it as an exercise to test your skills, and check if your scene is equally scaled up, I didn't focus on it a lot in this tutorial, but yet I really took my time to fix my version. That's how my scene was looking when I did the render, and after that, composite. This is all for today, hope you liked the video and have learned something new, if you did, then please like the video and subscribe my channel, so you're always updated of my new upcoming videos. Once again Merry Christmas to all of you. Well see you in my next video, take care till then, happy blending.